What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel, previews and vlogs. All right, so today's video is gonna be about upgrading the Q system on this CTS V Sport. Now I finally get to do the upgrade on it. I've had the modules, the, H, uh, the HMI module and everything already since probably like December or January or something like that. And I just haven't done it for one, it's been cold even though I got a heater in the garage and I've been just lazy, honestly. Uh, other things that I've been, why I haven't done it is because I'm actually gonna do a different setup. Now, if you guys know on these Cadillacs, there is the little storage unit right underneath the Q system, which pretty much you can put anything in there, sunglasses or whatever. It's meant for a phone charger, but of course, my phone doesn't fit in it. I got an iPhone X, iPhone 11 Pro Max, and the phone doesn't fit in there. Now, there have been, and I've seen people say there is a way you could actually upgrade the little mat that's in there for it to fit, but it's still a tight fit in there with a bigger phone. Also, I don't wanna put the phone in the center console because sometimes, yes, even though I'm supposed to stay off my phone when I'm driving, I do pull the phone out or have to look at the phone for specific reasons. It's gonna go that way. I'm not even gonna explain why. Um, yeah, sometimes I do text real quick from it. It's quicker than texting through Siri or basically trying to tell Siri to text something because she won't get the words right. So, even though I'm not supposed to be doing it and that's completely against the law, yes, I do do it sometimes. Now, of course, the main reason for the upgrade is because of the 2.0 Q system, how laggy and slow that system is. And of course, if you guys look in here, I'm gonna show you real quick here, the actual, <laughs> how long it takes to load up. And I've been told that it's a lot quicker with the 2.5. Now, unfortunately, you cannot go higher than a 2.5 on our cars, you know, 2014 to 2019 CTS, or actually 2017 CTS, I believe came with the 2.5 upgrade on there. Other than that, it goes higher to the higher upgrades and those have a lot better Q systems, even their, I think you could even get Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto through those things. But on these cars, 2015, 2014, 2016s, you're stuck with a 2.5, which is the highest, but it does make it a lot better. So we're gonna go ahead, install that. So here's pretty much what you guys are going to need. You're gonna need, of course, your HMI, which is this right here, the radio module itself which is this. I am gonna be upgrading the center console USB in there. Now my USB currently has, of course, a SD card, which I've never used, but I'm upgrading it because the way this charger works, it is not as not fast charging. Now, if you guys seen one of my other videos where I had installed the Pro Clip mount on there, then you know that I use wireless charging on my phone. Of course, my phone has the little magnets back there to hook up to the skosh mount that I use to hook up to that. Now, I'm gonna be changing that to the Pro Clip, which is, yes, it's big and bulky, but the reason I'm doing that again, it's gonna have a wired connection, which is gonna charge. With this charger, it's gonna charge a lot faster, and I'm gonna be able to use Apple CarPlay, while at the same time, the phone will be right next to the radio. Now, even though a lot of people are like, well, if you're gonna have the you know, Apple CarPlay, why do you need your phone? Again, I do still use the phone sometimes and it's a lot quicker if you're responding to something. I'm not texting while I'm driving around. If I do sometimes pull up at a light and then I text real quick back. But if you are texting uh, while you're driving, what you're not supposed to be doing, you know, shame on me. But it's quicker to respond through a text than actually respond through the queue system. I'm using them. I want to do the upgrade as because I want it, of course, to be faster. And I do like using the maps on the system and the map on the queue sucks to type up something or to anything like that when it comes to that. So it will give you Apple CarPlay accessibility. Now, let's look at the actual. All right, so of course, most of you guys know what your cars look like. And this is the Q system pretty much right here. So the reason that I'm doing the upgrade mainly is because of the Apple CarPlay. The way I have it set up right now is normally, of course, there would be a pro mount, a pro clip mount right on this side with a wireless charger that connects to my glove box right here. But that's kind of changed completely right now. What I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be doing basically a, still a pro clip mount, but it's gonna be an upgraded version, bigger, bulkier upgraded version, but it's still gonna be a pro clip mount. Now, there are a lot of options for you guys out there. You could do the 2.5 upgrade. Now, I did this through, I found this actually upgrade through a Cadillac page on Facebook, Cadillac CTS V owners, and they have 
Every year around November, around that time there, they have like these giveaways where you where you enter a raffle and you know you pay whatever twenty bucks and you can pay that like if, if let's just say they actually had some real cool stuff in there. One was the SKU system. They had of course parts from Savage Cadillac. They had a setup for wheels and tires. I mean, and that one of course depending on what you're raffling off, the price of each raffle is higher. But you could enter that. You say they say they'll save twenty people and it's gonna be uh. $60 raffle let's just say if you could enter it like 20 times if you want just take the whole raffle at that point you're paying pretty much paying for the actual product but there are raffles and that's how I won this Q system so actually honestly it cost me about $30 or I believe it was $30 to do this upgrade because I won the raffle I think I answered maybe once I think I answered but it's still I won the raffle and ended up getting this upgrade so that's why I'm doing the upgrade as well I was gonna do this to begin with and pay the whole I think it's $600 to do this, but I ended up just winning that raffle, which was I excited about. It, it was just, which I was excited about. Anyways, so like I said, the main reason, of course, is because of I want the Apple CarPlay on the car. And again, there's other options up there. There's a Phoenix radio, which I have a, a few guys that I know on Instagram and on my uh, Facebook pages. One of them is the Bat Caddy. Check his link out. But this is his Cadillac radio setup. The way he's got it set up is Phoenix radio, actually. It looks like a Tesla style radio. It replaces the entire system. The whole system is replaced. And it controls your heated seats. It controls your AC. And there's other options for it. You could actually even get a adapter for that radio to have Bluetooth cat or Bluetooth Apple CarPlay, which to me is awesome. At this point in time, I'm gonna keep this setup. I like the way this system looks. A lo I've, since I laid eyes on it when I first saw these cars, this this third generation of Cadillacs come out, I love the way it looked. So I'm gonna keep it for now. I might upgrade in the future, I'm not sure. But again, for 30 bucks to get the 2.5 system on there for a little bit faster and the Apple CarPlay, you can't you can't beat that. Anyways, another reason, of course, that I wanna keep this is because of this cubby hole. In here, I have my iPod and my phone which would connect there, it doesn't really fit in there, especially if you plug it in to the USB connector at the bottom. Once you plug the USB connector, the phone definitely won't fit in there because it'll hit the sides of this. So that's why I use an iPod in there for my music that I have uh, stored. Now I do stream a lot of music as well, which I go through Bluetooth to that, but this will be a direct connection as well now, connecting it to the phone straight to the actual Q system now it won't be a USB which gets you a lot better connection in the center console here I'm gonna be upgrading the USB-C or USB and the micro SD connector in here for a faster charger now that's what I showed you guys earlier I'm gonna be doing that connection as well while we do this whole upgrade and that's gonna give me faster charging and of course it'll connect to this wirelessly without having to hide the phone anywhere. And the phone's actually gotta be mounted right up here, right next to the Q system. So let's go ahead, get this thing started and get this whole thing taken apart on this side. And again, I'm gonna go through the whole steps of what I'm doing, but just don't forget, again, Jet Fuel come, came out with this video years ago, oh, over a year ago, over two years ago, I think. And he's got detailed steps on how to do it. But again, don't forget, just don't stop watching my video and go to his video. Just watch the whole setup, how I'm going to do it. Maybe you guys will like my setup as well. And then if you guys want specific detailed instructions on how to do it, he's got an awesome video. All right, so let's go ahead and get out of the car and get this thing taken apart and started. You're going to need for the install. 3 8 ratchet, a 10 millimeter deep socket, a 7 millimeter deep socket, and a short 7 millimeter. Some extensions, a trim tool remove or trim removal tool, needle nose pliers, screwdriver and if you guys are comfortable you could use an impact gun if you want just know that these are plastic pieces you're dealing with with and you may break them if you go too uh too fast or too hard with this thing so i used it on certain applications you guys will see on the video where i used it to start off we're gonna remove this trim piece right here this actually just pried right out and that reveals a seven millimeter screw right there now i'm gonna remove this which is i've installed this for my old usb or actual iphone charger so now we're gonna remove that screw out of here, seven millimeters again. And then this just pops right out of there. Now, we're gonna, next thing we're gonna do is open up the glove box and remove this piece here. Again, a bunch of clips just hold on to it. And then you got two different seven millimeter screws right on the side here. We're gonna remove those. And now to remove this trim piece here on the center piece, you gotta kind of pry over a small 
little notch that's in there. You gotta pry over that piece and you gotta pull towards the door and towards you as well. So out and out, and there you go. Next thing we gotta disconnect the battery. So 10 millimeter socket for that. Unplug the battery. So make sure you put something to get the glove box out. There are two seven millimeter screws, one on the left side and one on the right side. That's one of them and that's the other one. We're gonna go ahead and take those out of there. Now again, if you're gonna be using a power tool, just be careful you don't strip anything as you're taking this out. Once you got both of those out, you're gonna wanna take this trim piece right down here, pull towards you and down, and then it'll reveal all these cables. To get these disconnected out of here, they're pretty easy. I did struggle with the black one and the brown one that are in there. It took me a little bit to get them out of there. For some reason, I couldn't pretty much reach the connector with my fingers. So, but once you get them out, just make sure you don't break anything or all right, so once you get that out, it'll reveal another seven millimeter screw in there. Go ahead and get that out of there to remove the lower panel. This, you gotta push back on it, push down. That'll reveal your set, your HMI module, which is actually fairly easy to remove. Now, be careful with these tabs and these clips here. You don't wanna break those. What you wanna pretty much do is push back on it as far as you can and pull up, and then the whole thing comes out. And then, of course, you can just connect all the cables, and they go back in the same order, pretty much they're color-coded and you can see that on the back of the modules. All right, so once that is out, now we gotta remove the airbag. So there are two 10 millimeter bolts, or nuts actually holding this in there. So we'll go ahead and take those two out. Now when taking the airbag, just be careful as you're taking it down. It is gonna to wanna to come down on its own. You wanna go ahead and hold it with one hand as you're removing the actual screws on here. Now once you get it all out, just go ahead and move it out, out of the way. Now be careful not to, of course, damage the wiring on it. Just go ahead and put it straight to the side and that'll reveal another 17 millimeter bolt to get the glove box out. Now here you have one, two, three, four more bolts that actually have this glove box held in here. So we're gonna go ahead and take those out of there. Also, there's a, usually a bolt right here that holds on. Now, this came off when I did the micro filter on this car. So let's go ahead and remove these bolts out of here. And another thing is, the last thing holding this airbag on here after you remove all four bolts on here, or screws, is going to be a small notch right on this area. Right, so once the box is down, you wanna remove, of course, this connector here and some of the wiring in here is hooked up by clips and just to get some of the tension out and you'll be able to work a lot better without the glove box being here. So go ahead and remove these things out of the way and then you're able to get down to the radio module and easier access to that. So let's go ahead and get this radio module out of here and this just gets removed by pulling this clips back here. All right, so to remove the radio module, just pull back on the clips. Please make sure you don't break these things because if not, it won't go back on there. And then of course, pry the radio now. You wanna push the radio back slightly as you're kind of prying it with the trim removal tool here. And it's gonna take a little bit, usually just pry, but remember, don't break the clips on there. And then kind of push back on it slightly and then it should come right out. And of course, unplug any connectors that are in the back. Again, those are, Basically connectors that go in the same spot, you can't mix those things up when you're putting the old or the new radio module back in there. So real quick here, I'm at the point where I pretty much got everything off for you guys and showed you exactly how kind of to get everything off. Like I said, Pretty much showed you every screw and everything that comes out of there now one of the couple things is when you are pulling that last module out there is a big wiring loom this big loom right here that kind of gets in your way you got to kind of push everything back and out to pull everything forward now everything is of course going back on now and it's pretty simple what you did the hardest part i think out of this whole process for me was dealing with this side splitter since I need, you need to be kind of sitting in this area here while you're moving everything. This side splitter was getting in my way. There's a couple times I actually felt it flex down. You can see where I kind of rubbed on it right there. And I felt it flex down, I thought I was gonna break this. But that was pretty much the hardest because I had, since I've installed this, I have less, more of an angle I gotta lay in here. So, so now we're gonna put everything back together the same way that you took it out. Don't forget, keep all your screws where you won't lose them. And then 
we'll get this install finished. Right, so I got both modules on there now. Everything is still off. One thing you want to make sure is, of course, before putting everything back together, is that it works. So let's turn this thing on. Fuse system actually loads a lot quicker. The temperature and so don't worry about it. It takes a while for that to set. And there we go. We want to see that projection on our screen. That's what's going to give us our Apple CarPlay. So let's hook this up. Sorry for the constant beeping of the car here. I got the doors open. And of course, there we go. Sorry, I had to switch my hands because I couldn't get my other hand in there. But let's turn the music off. And there we have your Apple CarPlay. And everything's working. Google Maps. And there you have it. And of course, the new features, of course, do work on Apple CarPlay. So now that we know it's working, let's put that back together. And we still have to, or I still have to actually do the USB in here, which is a lot quicker than this over here was. All right, so we pretty much got everything back together, uh, except for this piece here, which I'm gonna install at the end anyways, once I'm done. And that center piece right there. Remember, the reason I'm leaving that center piece open is because I am installing and running cable from the inside of the center console out here for the pro clip mount and right now we are going to be doing the installation of the new USB port for faster charging so that's why I'm leaving pretty much this section kind of open there even though you don't really need to open this to put the new USB port into the center console there I'm still just leaving it open for now so let's go to the back and go ahead and install that USB port everything out of the center console, pens, everything got in there. We're gonna need access to all this. There's screws here you're gonna need access to. And you're gonna have to remove this because there's some screws in here you're gonna need access to right in there. Now, you can remove this from in here and pull everything out. The problem is that the wires for this, one of them is very, very short and will not lead, let you reconnect or reconnect 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 the actual USB port in there I've tried it I plugged one back in and I wasn't able to connect the other one which is too short don't know why GM did that it would have been a lot easier just to be able to pull everything out and just plug in wires and pop it back in but you know GM so you actually do have to this assemble this whole piece here just to get in here so we're gonna do that right now all right so this is pretty simple actually to do here this whole center piece here just pulls out now luckily I don't have and I care less if I had the rear AC control I know the premiums have that I don't have that that's less thing for my to go bad on mine so hardly anybody sits back here anyway so we're gonna pull this thing just out like this and comes right out just like that now this is still held on even though I don't have the connectors I still have a one connector for the 12 volt outlet that's in here so we're gonna have to unplug that real quick All right, once you remove that piece there, of course, now there are cars that will have more connectors in here. Of course, you gotta get every connector out for the rear AC controls. Again, mine didn't, just have one little connector for the door or the actual 12 volt outlet. Now there's two screws right in here and in here so you get this top piece out of here. Now, you could actually reach those with just a regular screwdriver. You don't need any weird actual screwdriver.
these two screws will stay in there, so just leave them there for now, of course. We're gonna remove one, two, and three screws, which are inside, of course, the center console. Once you get those screws out of the way, the center console will just come up, so we'll go ahead and get those taken care of right now. So here are both connectors. This is the original equipment connector that came with it. And this is the one that I found, of course, on eBay. So this is gonna give you more output to charge. Again, this you lose the SD card with this, but I never even used the SD card on this thing. So to me, it doesn't really matter. Big difference is on these, the connectors are pretty much the same. Just the big difference is the plastic clips. This has metal tabs on there. And of course, you know, one's white, one's black. This actually matched better going inside of the dash or the center console. And this one's a fast charger. And all I need is one USB plug for what I'm, my, the way my connection's gotta be. So putting this back in, of course, is the reverse of what we just did. So before I drop it there and break it, but so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on there, put everything back together, and then show you guys how I'm gonna mount this thing on there for it to work and let's see how it actually looks. So it is big and bulky and everything, but let's see how it actually looks after I plug in everything and everything's working and let's see everything works the way I'm thinking in my head. All right, so I got the new USB in the car already, which is, again, takes two seconds to put it back on. Let's make sure that this works though I want it before I plug everything in because I am gonna be doing where the wire is gonna be completely hidden from everything so you won't see this wire. I'm hoping that this wire is long enough to reach what I needed to reach. Now, they sent it to you with this connector, which we're not gonna be using that. We're gonna just take this zip tie off. All right, so once we get the zip tie off, let's go ahead and go to the car and test this thing out. All right, so I'm gonna put this in here for now. We're gonna go ahead and plug this in to the new USB connector in here. in there I'm gonna dock the phone and this Kate now this holder for the from the pro clip is actually a one with that lets you allow, allows you to put it in with a case there are ones there are ones that if you don't have a case on your phone those or if you have like an otter box case they have a thicker one or a bigger one that actually fit an otter box case now this is adjustable so you guys know this does open and I'm trying to do it here with one hand but trust me it does open up to be able to fit both phones it is you need both hands to open this clip up here let's set up the camera down here where I can show you guys so here you go so it does open up enough to be able to fit the phone right in there dock it once you have it docked, you can set it to, you can put the settings down. All right, docked, and then make sure you just put it to whatever the size of the phone is, of course, and you're good to go. And now it'll slide in and out whenever you need it to use. So now that that's connected, let's see if it works the way I need it to work. So first of all, we got power. Now let's see if the Q system picks it up. projection and click on that okay make sure we got to unlock the phone of course and there's carplay and perfect so now it works just like I, that I planned it so now this is gonna be sitting right here so I'm gonna go ahead and hook everything up here for you guys and show you how this is actually gonna work. So this is actually pretty cool. So it's charging the phone. 
at a 50% faster rate than the original equipment USB connector in the car would have done. I got Apple CarPlay and my phone is gonna be set up right there. So I'm gonna put everything back together. What I am gonna do here is I am gonna drill a small hole at the bottom right in there in that very corner to be able to run this wire through there and through this side here that I left open to put the pro clip mount right here and you won't be able to see any wires running through other than the pro clip mount wire that'll come out just maybe about that much of wiring in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now before I put everything back together and finish this install. All right, so you guys know where I'm at here with this. Pretty much everything's back together. Center console's back together. The pro clip mount has been mounted onto the car with the charger. And I ran this wire right through here came up behind here and of course this is the only part you're gonna see of the wiring uh, wish I could have hid this a little bit better one thing about me and wiring I don't like wiring hanging all over the car so I always try to hide anything I do when it comes to wiring as best as possible to make it look as original equipment as possible even though we know that is not an original equipment mount but I'm gonna finish putting these clips back up or the trim pieces back on I need to put that a piece on that piece on and this whole install the Q system 2.5 upgrade with the new USB charger and the pro clip mount on there is done. So let me finish that up and I'll be back with you guys in just a second. All right, so now that we're completely done with all this and I do want to apologize for one thing. I When I did the center console install for the USB port, I thought I was recording how I took off the USB port and how I put the new one back on, completely missed all that. It is very simple to actually do once you guys get in there you will notice that it's not very hard to actually pull out the USB port and put the new one in. And I apologize for that again. I should have done that by step by step, but I did not record it. I thought I hit the record button. But anyways, but anyways, now that the install is done, I'm gonna show you exactly how this whole setup here works. So of course, you grab your phone, or my phone in this case, and we're gonna slide it right into the port, charge it. Now, now it's charging right into the actual dock there. And right away, it picks up Apple CarPlay. So this was my whole way I was trying to set this up where I didn't have to you know, hide or put my phone away into the center console or inside the cubby hole in here into this little storage compartment in here because I have my iPod in there. Now, thinking about it, I'm actually gonna get rid of the iPod. I got a 512 gigabyte phone here and I'm gonna take all the music that's in the iPod, put it in my phone, that way I have both things all in one device and I don't have to have anything inside of here because simple as this, when you open this, it does hit, it, you know, it gets in, it, this does get in its way because it is a little bit bigger. Of course, you can move it this way and you get a little bit, of course, room and you gotta move it back this way. But you know what? Because I have the 100, 512 gigabyte phone and I think I've even used only 80 gigabytes of this phone, and I have about eight gigabytes in storage over here with that basically music that I carry around and say this um, iPod. I'm gonna go ahead and just switch everything over and then basically I'll have it all in one. Stream my music and all my music will be also stored in my phone in here. But again, this is the setup that I wanted with the phone. You guys can see right here, pretty decent. I got my phone right there, I can still see my phone and I have my Apple CarPlay now on here. And of course, like I said, everything is a lot faster. If you guys go from one spot to the other, basically jumping around from the navigation over to your phone, over to, I mean, Pandora, if it was available, which I don't have it available, weather, climate controls, the car is not on right now, so no climate controls, of course. I don't have rear climate control, so I don't have those controls in here. I've heard that if you, on some of these, you don't have those, that option is gone from what I've heard, or it changes or something. So to me, it doesn't really matter, but you get the extra SMS text bubble in there, your OnStar, your traffic and stuff like that. So by doing this switch, it does make everything a lot faster. You can see here, even just the actual movement of the map itself makes it a lot faster. You reset it. It just responds a lot quicker by doing this 2.0 to 2.5 upgrade. So if you guys are thinking of doing something like this, go ahead by all means, do this. Do the Phoenix radio if you guys like the whole Tesla style radio, that's an awesome radio as well. Like I said, I, I may be doing that setup at some point, but right now I am very pleased and happy with the way I have this set up right now. 
and I think this would probably be one of the best setups you can go if you guys have a ATS or even a CTS. I'm not sure if this works for the ATS, but I am gonna say 100% you can do this setup for the CTS. So if you guys are stopping by for the first time, don't forget to subscribe if you like this, share it, hit the like button, helps me out a lot, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.